What's up guys, it's Adam Carmel here and I'm the Mindset and Performance Coach for Poker Ambition. Over the past few months, myself and Rene have been working hard to provide you guys with the best content and coaching experiences to turn you into the best poker players you can be. Rene will continue to provide you with expert strategy and technical knowledge and I'm going to start producing more mindset and performance content for you guys to help you to level up. So if you do enjoy this type of video, make sure you smash that like button before you go so we know to bring you more valuable content like this. With that being said, let's dive into today's video. In today's video, you're going to learn the optimal grinding to studying ratio for poker players. Now this is a big question to tackle. I've probably been asked this question at least 50 times throughout my coaching career. Players ask me, Adam, how much should I grind? How much should I study? What's the optimal ratio? And to be honest, I've shied away from the question. I've been like, oh, it's very specific. It depends on your circumstances. But today, I'm not gonna sit on the fence. I'm gonna give you exact direct numbers of how much you should be grinding, how much you should be studying relative to your situation. And then we're gonna stress test it with real life examples to see if it holds true. I want you guys in the comments to let me know if you disagree with anything or from your experiences, you found those these ratios not to be true, but we're gonna tackle it and we're gonna give some real concrete advice and actionable steps for you guys to take as a result. All right, now before we dive into uh, the juicy stuff, I wanna introduce you guys to uh, a problem solving model called the multi-arm bandit problem. All right, and the bandit's referring to a slot machine. All right, this is used in machine learning and it's gonna be very apparent for what we're gonna talk about today. So uh, imagine you're a gambler in Vegas and you're stood in front of six slot machines, all right? And each slot machine has its own individual payout structure, all right? So some are paying out fast and some of them are paying out slow. You sit down and you start playing on one machine. As you're playing on this machine, you're getting information on this one machine and now you have the option to keep playing on that one machine or to stand up and try a different machine, all right? So let's say there's one machine, you're getting some good spins. I've not really played much slots, but you're getting some good momentum. You have the option to either exploit the machine you're playing, all right, exploit the machine you're playing, or to explore other options. Although this one might be paying out at a certain rate, you don't know what you're missing, all right? So you've got the option to exploit the current machine or explore better options, all right? Now, your ability to make the most money over the long term is, your, is gonna be dictated by the, this equation how much you can use your knowledge to exploit what's in front of you and how much you can gain new knowledge to improve your strategy, all right, to jump between machines. So as a poker player, this is the exact same situation you, you're in when it comes to grinding and studying. Grinding, as long as you're a winning player, is you exploiting, all right, you're exploiting the games and you're getting paid at a certain rate, all right, you, you make that short-term profitability. And you, you're studying is you're exploring, you're trying to find better strategies, better ways to play so you can come back and make more money. And over the long term, your long term win uh, profitability is going to be judged by how well you do both of these. All right, how well you have the ratio, the ratio of grinding to studying, to exploiting to exploring. And we're going to tackle this today and hopefully give you guys some good ideas of how you should manage this equation. All right, so with that as a kind of framework, I then want to set another pretense. And the pretense I'm going to set is, as a poker player, you have one of one or two objectives, all right? And they're generally going to correlate to the same strategy. You either want to be as good as possible, you want to become the best player you can be, so that you can play high stakes or whatever stakes you, you class as the highest for you, and you want to make as much money as possible in your poker career. And generally, those things are going to correlate to the same sort of approach, all right? Because if you become as good as possible, that gives you the opportunity to make as much money as possible. I'm sure you guys will all agree with that. The best players are gonna make the most money, depending on game selection. But yeah, you're gonna basically try to optimize your profitability over the long term, not the short term. This matters a lot, all right? If we're playing a longer term frame, it's gonna make a bigger impact. All right, the next pretense I'm gonna set is that your put career is gonna be mid to long term, all right? So we're not talking about how to make the most money in a month or in a week, because if we did, we'd be talking about complete different ratios. Let's say your poor career, for the, for the nature of this video, is gonna be two plus years, all right? At least two years, but two years and on. And the reason I'm, I'm setting this as a pretense is if we're thinking very short term, how to make the most money right now, 
it's going to be completely different. Your approach to grinding and studying is more of a short-term model, whereas if we're thinking more long-term over the course of your career, which I'm sure you guys will agree, do you care how much you make in a, in a day or do you care how much you make in your career? It's more, much more important in your career, right? So if we're optimizing for the longer term, we're going to approach it differently, all right? It, does, it matters quite a lot, all right? So with that in mind, I then want to set you guys some considerations before we go into setting the exact amount you should be grinding and the exact amount you should be studying. So some factors I've come up with, there's a, this is not an exhaustive list by any means, there's definitely ones that could be added, but here are some things to consider before you decide on your kind of grinding to study ratio. The first thing is your ability relative to your stake. All right, so if you're an absolute crusher at your stake, you've got a high win rate, one of the highest win rates you've seen at your stake, you're gonna make a lot of money by grinding, by grinding the high hours at those games. All right, so you generally want to increase your hours if your win rates and skill levels really good at that game. All right, these are just factors. We're not gonna to go too exhaustive on them, but we'll come back to them as we go through. Next thing you wanna look at is how fast you are progressing slash moving up stakes. All right, if you're a low stakes player and you're progressing quick, you're moving up stakes at a very fast rate, you might wanna have a different ratio of studying to grinding. All right, we're gonna talk about these specifically when I go through the rules and the examples, but how, well, how fast you're progressing. If you're someone who's quite content with the stakes they're at and you're not looking to progress quickly, you might want to have a different approach, which would generally be more grinding heavy. So those progressing quicker are generally going to have a study heavy approach. Those who are uh, progressing slower or less, uh, less kind of high, going to the less high stakes, might want to go for a more grind heavy model. All right. Next thing we want to look at is your endurance for grinding. How many good quality hours of grinding can you get out of yourself? It's all about a good saying I want to grind eight hours a day, but if after three hours you start losing focus and you start playing your B, C, D game we're not going to be able to optimize eight hours of grinding, all right? So we've got to get realistic with how much you can actually get out of yourself. You can train that endurance over time, but it's just a fact that to bear in mind when it comes to setting these hours. Then we've got how much you can learn in a given day slash week, all right? How much can you actually learn in a day or week? Now, if you speak to most poker players, they would say they're studying, they're learning, they're trying to improve, they're trying to get better. They're watching videos, learn lots of stuff, all right? Now, it's interesting, I listened to a Razor Edge podcast with Ben CB, and he said, if you ask players to write down 10 things they had learned and implemented into their game in the last six months, most players would come up short, all right? So uh, we've got to ask ourselves, as poker players, how much are you actually learning, putting into your game, and effectively improving, all right? So uh, a lot of people think they can learn so many hours a day, it's not really true, all right? So uh, most models, what I've seen, and from like kind of high performers, you can get one to three high quality, deep focused hours of studying in per day, all right? This is almost any topic, all right? There's a great book called Deep Work by Cal Newport, who thinks the best performers can get up to three hours of high quality, like real high quality learning, whereas most people, one is a good benchmark, all right? So we're gonna come back to this because it's gonna set a pretense when we go into the numbers, but we get at least one and three is kind of the upper, the upper boundary, all right? We can push on from there, especially if we look at different study methods, but in terms of intense learning, that's, that's kind of the framework we're gonna be using. And the final consideration is, what are the opportunity costs of not grinding? All right, what are the opportunity costs when I study over grinding? All right, I could have done another 20, but those are the first ones that came to mind and the most, some of the most important ones when we're considering our grinding to uh, studying ratios. All right, now I'm gonna do something brave and I'm gonna come up with a rules, a set of rules to follow. It's gonna be two rules and then we're gonna explore if these rules stand up in different situations, all right? So when it comes to setting your optimal grinding to study ratio, there's two rules I want you guys to follow, all right? Rule number one is you should grind more than you study. All right, you should grind more new study. So at least 50% of your designated hours to poker should be grinding. And you might say, Adam, why is this? All right, and the reason is, when you get above that 50% mark of studying, there's a tipping point where you can't implement what you're learning. All right, so as you guys know, as poker players, there's an element of learning new stuff, but it's not no good just gaining knowledge. Gain knowledge, gain knowledge, gain knowledge. You've got to actually use that knowledge in game and implement it. And I've literally, I've worked with hundreds of poker players, like multiple hundreds of poker players. I probably spoke with maybe five to 600 players, at least um, in their careers. And I haven't came across a player, a very successful player who's crushing their games, who studies more than they grind, all right? And the reason being is it just comes really hard 
to implement. It really becomes really hard to implement your learning. You get to a point where you're almost more confused because the knowledge coming in, you can't filter it into your game. All right, so uh, this is the rule number one is we've got to grind, uh, sorry, yeah, grind more than we study as a pretense. All right, so uh, anyone who's thinking, all right, I'm just going to grind, like say uh, some up and coming players, might go, I'm just going to, I'm just going to study eight hours a day. It's like, okay, but is that effective? All right, so the first rule, and we're going to stress test this, so uh, bear with me because we're going to go through examples of mid stakes, low stakes, high stakes players and see how this would look and see if we can actually break these rules in practice. That's the first rule. The second rule is you should aim to study at least 10% of your total poker hours. All right, at least 10%. All right, you may go, well, I don't know where you're plucking these random numbers from. All right, so uh, the reason being is because, as I said before, most people can get one high quality hour of study, of deep focus, of deep learning out of themselves in a given day. All right, that's like not a high, not a low. It's like most players should aim for one high quality hour. All right, so if you can get one high quality hour, that high quality hour is going to be a great ROI. By that I mean it's going to improve your game over the long term. It's going to allow you to have good earning potential over the long term. So if you got you were the guy who got the one quality hour every single day, you're going to be able to progress and your knowledge and skill level is going to improve at a good rate, a good rate, which is going to give you more inner potential. So most players should be aiming to get that one hour. Now, if you're a grinding machine and you're grinding like crazy, even then you can still get that hour. All right. So say you're grind, you're putting ten hours into poker every day, you could grind nine of those hours in one hour of study. All right. So even on the top threshold of grinding, you get nine hours of grinding. You get one hour study. All right. So we want to aim for this. Right, I'm going to go through some models and some examples to see if this all true, holds true, all right? So two simple rules for you guys to bear in mind. At least half your hours should be grinding and at least 10% of your hours should be studying. So what we've got here, we've got 50-50 is the kind of the most extreme outlier. Then we've got your grinding hours, this one, can go all the way up to 90, but not above 90 in general, all right? Again, we'll talk about examples of where you might want to break that, but generally between 50 and 90. You're studying on the other side, is between 50 and not lower than 10. All right, as high as 50, not as low as 10. All right, so these are bandwidths to work in. All right, so we can toggle them up and down, but we can't go too far out of those ranges. All right, so now we're gonna go through examples of how this could look and also uh, what different players at different stakes might wanna use as their approaches and why they might wanna choose more studying or more grinding based on their situation. All right, so first of all, we're gonna look at a low stakes player. All right, so he's been playing it six months to a year, doesn't really matter how long, and he's putting 20 hours into poker. So the first thing before we do anything else, if split our hours, decide how many hours you are putting into poker in a given week, all right, in a given week. All right, so let's say this player is putting 20 hours into poker in a given week, because it's almost like having a pie. We've got to cut the pie between studying and grinding. We've got to decide in advance how big the pie is, all right? It's not infinite, all right? It's gonna be in that bandwidth, all right? So let's say this player is playing 20 hours of poker per week. So first of all, some of the, as a low stakes player, the opportunity costs of not playing are lower, right? Compared to high stakes guy, if you're, you're a low stakes guy, not playing, the opportunity costs aren't that big, all right? It's just your hourly is lower, all right? You also have the most to learn. So the ROI of your studying is a lot bigger. If you look at learning models, there's almost this like very steep learning curve at the start where you have a massive gain, and then you have something called the law of diminished returns as you study more. And it almost like evens off in this very um, depressing way. If you're a high stakes guy, you're, you're, you're towards the tail end of this flat, almost like flat curve with your learning. But as a, as a low stakes guy, you've got so much to learn, all right? So you've got to this opportunity to uh, improve your game a lot by studying. But also, you need to play. You need to put reps in. It's like in the gym, you need to put reps in to actually get good at the game. So we can't just go and study for 20 hours. We need to actually put reps into playing, all right? So we've got opportunity cost of learning, uh, sorry, a plan on, on that big. And we've got a great opportunity to learn, but we also need to get reps in for our kind of uh, grinding. So how would you approach it as this player? I would say we should really approach it with in terms of trying to get that one hour of high quality study a day, all right? So let's say this player's playing five days. He's spent five days in the poker. I say go for five hours, one hour a day of studying, all right? So that would give him five hours of studying. That would give him 15 hours of grinding. And his ratio of grinding to studying would be 75% grinding, 25% studying, all right? So he'd fall nicely in the model. The lowest this guy could go would be to two hours. If he did two hours of studying, 
and if 18 hours of grinding, that will put him right at the bottom in terms of his, his kind of 10% uh, to 90% ratios, all right? So uh, that's a kind of good, good framework. If he went over 50%, let's say he was doing 10 hours plus, I say that would be too much, all right? So he's pushed it too much. This low stakes guy needs to get reps in of playing poker and actually using what he's learning, all right? So somewhere in for that one hour, that kind of 25% study in would be a good model for this player. Now let's have a look at a mid stakes player. And let's say he's put in 30 hours a week into poker, all right? So now this player has more opportunity costs if he doesn't play. The, the cost of, grind, of, of studying is going to hurt a bit more because he could be grinding, having a good hourly. Uh, but at the same time, he's still got a lot of progression to make. All right, he's still trying to improve his game, both his win rate at the level he's playing, and he has the opportunity to progress from mid stakes to high stakes. All right, so this player needs to have a learning curve. If he wants to maximize his potential to earn money in his poker career, he needs to have a good study habit. So again, this player might want to start out with one hour a day. All right, so let's say this guy plays uh, six days a week, all right? So you do six hours of uh, studying and then you do 24 hours of grinding, all right? So six hours of studying, 24 hours of grinding. This would leave him with a ratio of 80% grinding to 20% studying, all right? So still in that, that framework that we've set. Let's say this guy is a bit of a, he loves learning and he's really good at studying and he enjoys it. Let's say he increases his, his threshold. He goes, you know what? One hour a day, that's nothing for me, Adam. I want to do two hours a day. Awesome, let's test that. So two hours a day would be 12 hours of studying in a week. All right, these are high quality hours. This is not passive watching Twitch, watching YouTube, even watching like run it once or passive trainer videos. This is full immersion. This is note taking. This is complete distraction free, really engaging your mind and learning at a high level. All right, this is not yeah, watching passive content. All right, so let's say this player did two hours a day. That'd be 12 hours in a week of grinding, uh, sorry, studying, and 18 hours of grinding. And the ratio would be 60% grinding to 40% studying. Again, very much within the framework which I'm setting, all right? Let's say this guy wanted to go for three hours a day, because I know I, I want to do more studying than him, three hours a day. Now he's broken this model that I've come up with, all right? And now he's, he'll be grinding 18, sorry, studying 18 hours, and he'll be grinding only 12. Now his ratio of grinding to studying would be 40% grinding, 60% studying, all right? So this player, I would say he needs to grind more, so increase his total hours, to, so it's at least 50-50, or study a bit less, and put some of those hours into grinding, all right? Could it work? Potentially, I haven't seen it work in, the, in practice, but you generally, because you, you need those playing hours, it's so hard, it's like, if someone wants to get strong in the gym, it's like, okay, you can take all the supplements you want, you can eat all the food you want, but you need to get in the gym a certain amount of time to lift. It's the same with, poker, you need to put those reps in, you need to actually use that knowledge. And as soon as you tip that threshold too far, you just can't. You're not, you're not able to implement. You're learning in a quicker rate, like there's more knowledge going in, but there's no implementation. There's no deep knowledge that you're actually being able to use into your game. Or there's too much knowledge, and you become overwhelmed. All right, so that player, again, would have two hours would be his kind of limit for studying. All right, then let's go to a high stakes player, all right? So a high stakes player, let's say he's playing 50 hours a week. All right, generally the high stakes players are gonna play the most. There's a reason they're the high stakes guys. And let's say this guy has massive opportunity cost by not playing. His hourly is really high. He's in super juicy games and he wants to uh, maximize his hourly. And let's say he's, he's playing five days a week and he's putting 10 hours into grind, into, into poker. All right, now this player has more of a trade-off to make. And we could argue, okay, in the short term, he's best off grinding, all right? Because his hourly's through the roof. But if this guy's plan on playing poker for another two plus years, two plus years of, of poker, he's gonna wanna make sure that players don't overtake him. He wants to make sure that he's keeping with the curve, that he's improving his game so he can continue to maximize his hourly, all right? So this player just maximizes his grinding, doesn't study at all, there's gonna be a limited amount of time before other players overtake him, all right? So with that in mind, this player again might wanna go, right, I wanna have that one high quality hour, one high quality hour a day of studying. So make over five hours, of a calendar in a week of studying, one hour a day of five days, and then 45 hours of grinding, all right? Because remember, his hours really high. So this player would fall into the category be 90% grinding and 10% studying. He's maximizing his hourly, so he's exploit, 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 but he's still exploring. He's still getting better. He's still improving. If he tipped that too far, went to 90, 99% grinding, and kept that studying low, he's playing a risky game, all right? Because how long before someone else, other players overtake him, and his hourly drops, especially in the high stakes games when the fields are a lot smaller. All right, so because we're trying to play this kind of multi-banded game, we need to exploit 
by plan, but we also need to explore how to get better. And as soon as we stop exploring and just exploit, 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 we're going to get overtaken, all right? And we're, going to, we're not going to get the optimal strategy and we're not going to make the most money over the course of our poker careers. So hopefully this has been of interest to you guys and I would like to know your thoughts in the comments. So let me know what your current ratio is. Let me know in, in the ratio terms how much you grind compared to how much you study as a ratio. I'd love to know if any of you guys are not within the boundaries I've set. And if you're not, let me know why. And let me know if you think it works for you. Obviously everyone's individual and there's different things that work for different people. But hopefully this will give you guys a good framework, all right? So uh, to give the rules and to simplify it and summarize everything, aim to grind more than you study. Aim to study at least 10% of your grinding hours. And aim to grind, aim to study, sorry, at least one high quality hour. At least one high quality hour per poker day. All right, if you can stick to those three rules, you've got an amazing system, all right? And that's generally gonna be very much like 80, 20 principles. You're gonna get the, the maximum, a lot of your, your uh, poker career. But obviously you can, you can switch it around at times. So there's gonna be some of you guys who are chasing high volume because you're doing leaderboard challenges or you have, you've got a massive rate back deal and you might just wanna grind and go out of sync, all right? So uh, in the short term, it's fine to go out of sync, all right? So uh, every single week, you don't need 100% follow the exact guidelines. But over the course of months in your, your poker career, you should follow a sort of framework like this. So if I looked at the amount of hours you put into poker in the course of a year, then we should be able to go, okay, how much percentage foot was grinding and what percentage was studying? And it should start to fall into those bandwidths. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, let me know in the comments which of the, the, what percentage you fall into for your own ratios. I'd love to know that, it'd be super interesting for me. And if you like this video, smash that thumbs up. Also subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos of this nature. And if you're a poker player who wants to improve their mindset and you're not sure where to start, there's a quiz in the description. Click on that, go through the quick uh, questions and it will tell you what level your mindset is right now. And more importantly, it will tell you how to improve it.